What's going on everybody? Welcome back to Chud's Barbecue. My name is Bradley Robinson and today I'm gonna show you how I made this. Beautiful, delicious, smoky, barky, tender, brisket lean. Coming up! A few weeks back I made a video where I made some brisket burn-ins using only the point meat from a brisket. And in the comments of that video there was a lot of people asking me how I would cook just the lean side of a brisket. And that's something I've been wanting to do for a long time because I get questions and emails and DMs from people all the time saying that the lean brisket is the only cut they can find. And in my travels I've noticed that too, that a lot of places outside of Texas will split the muscles up and I see a lot more leans than I do fatty sections. So when people ask me what to do with it, I usually tell them to just make pastrami out of it and that's just because the lean has a lot less intramuscular fat and really doesn't break down as well as a full brisket or just the fatty side and it's really easy to dry out. But that being said, I've never cooked just the lean. So today I figured I'd give it a shot. That's right folks, we're cooking just the lean half of a brisket today and it is going to be delicious. This is the lean side of a brisket. The lean side of a USDA prime brisket. This is one half of a pack of brisket. And I gotta say, just the shape of this thing is making me kind of nervous for this cook. I think it's gonna look pretty weird. I've got some thin bits, but we're gonna do a little bit of trimming on this thing. On the back here, we've got a big pocket of fat. So we're gonna take that down a little bit. Same on this side. We're gonna take this side down just like we would on a full size regular old brisket. Cause again, we want some fat, but not too much fat. Kind of nice how you can see exactly what you're doing. Looking good to me. On the back side, we're gonna go through and clean up this silver skin. You know the drill, folks. As always, try and cut with the grain. You'll have a much easier time getting this off than if you're trying to go against it. Just trying to clean it up a little bit. Got that burnt edge on there. I'm gonna take that off. And then we've got this super thin corner, which I'm just gonna round off a little bit. Otherwise, it'll curl up. Take down this fat cap a wee bit. This is weird. Round off these corners. And there we have it. A nice looking lean side of the brisket. Nicely trimmed up. Still got some point meat on there, so that's kind of nice. Again, this is probably going to cook up really weird. I'm assuming this side is still going to pool up. And because it's so much thinner over here than here, this side's probably going to overcook. But hey, I don't want to take this down too much. So we're just going to see how it goes. This is a little experiment after all. But looking good to me, I think it's time to season it up. Going on with our classic rub today, which is a little SPG. This is two parts 16 mesh black pepper, one part diamond crystal kosher salt to one half part granulated garlic. And because this is just the lean side of the brisket, it really needs all the help it can get. So we're gonna pull out all the stops today, starting with a slather. Just going on with some mustard. Just a little bit, nice thin coat. Again, I don't think the slather is really gonna do much for the flavor profile, but hey, if there's a chance, we might as well do it. And on we go. Nice heavy coat, folks, you know the rules. And as always, if you're doing a 50-50 salt to pepper, I would go a little bit lighter on the rub because you don't wanna oversalt this thing. Oh. And as always, folks, don't forget the sides, especially on a cut like this. Rookie move. Looking good to me. Let's fire up the pit. There is a snake in the toe of my boot. On we go with our brisket lean. Gonna aim the thicker part towards the fire. Right there is looking about good. And again, I'm pulling out all the stops to give this thing a fighting chance. I'm going in with a water pan, as well as a blocking log, the biggest, densest log I could find. And usually I don't do this kind of thing because I feel like it doesn't really make that much of a difference, but hey, I don't think it can hurt. So we're gonna rock this pit around 250 degrees, nice and smoky for the next three hours or so. Then we'll probably bump it up to around 275 and check back in. We're about five hours into this cook. This brisket lean is actually looking quite nice. And it's about this time I'm gonna go in and start hitting it with a little bit of apple cider vinegar. That's just gonna keep the outside cooled down a little bit, helps keep the bark soft. I'm also gonna hit this log too, so this doesn't burst into flames anytime soon. Still got plenty of water in our water pan, but we're gonna spritz this for the next few hours. Make sure it gets nice and smoky, doesn't get too crispy on the edges or anything like that. And then continue on our smoke. This video is brought to you by Red 
Reynolds Kitchen's Butcher Paper. So last night that brisket lean came up to an internal temp of about 180 degrees and it was looking beautiful. Nice and barky. So I decided to give it the old paper wrap. You know all about butcher paper wraps, folks. It's really gonna help keep that meat nice and tender and juicy while protecting it from being overly smoked and helping prevent any edges from getting too crispy or too burnt. So I wrapped it up in some butcher paper along with some beef fat, of course. You gotta have a little tallow in your wrap, folks. Especially when you're cooking just a brisket lean. You know, I'm trying to give this thing all the help it can and as the name suggests, it's quite lean. So a little extra fat is going to help. It also makes the butcher paper a little more pliable so you can get a nice tight wrap on there. So I wrapped it up, threw it back on the smoker until it came up to an internal temp of around 200 degrees. And that butcher paper is gonna keep it wrapped up nicely with all those juices and tallow to make sure we get that wonderful buttery bark that we're all after. But the main reason why I am loving this product right now is because in the past, butcher paper was kind of hard to come by. So I ended up buying these big restaurant size rolls and then you gotta get that metal contraption that holds the roll with that blunt cutter on there. And as someone that doesn't use butcher paper nearly as much as a high traffic barbecue joint, that roll would last me way too long and in that metal contraption, it was way too big and bulky. So I ended up living underneath this table where it's exposed to the weather and the paper just got dirty and when the rain hit it, it would ruin a few layers and it was just not working out. But with this, it is enough for a backyard cook such as myself, fits nicely in any cupboard. And most importantly, it's got this beautiful little slide cutter. So convenient. Whoa. Nice, clean piece of butcher paper. You don't have to do that whole tear thing where if you've ever done that, you know you're gonna get like a 40% success rate with getting a proper tear. And this butcher paper is great, nice and high quality. It's quite strong, even when wet. I was just handling that brisket a minute ago, even though it's saturated with beef fat, it is still holding strong with no fear of leaks or tearing. And like all the good butcher paper, it is unbleached, unwaxed, and FDA compliant. But if you've never used butcher paper before, I feel inclined to tell you that this is meant for low and slow barbecuing. It's rated up to 300 degrees, but it's paper. And most of the time it's fat soaked paper. So you don't want to get it too close to your flame and you don't want to use it on a grill. So if you're in the market for some butcher paper, I highly recommend getting the Reynolds Kitchen's butcher paper. This stuff is great, strong, made in the USA. And it's great for more than just wrapping up briskets. You know, all my Christmas presents are wrapped in butcher paper. It's also a great way to serve, you know, lay down some butcher paper on a tray. That's what all the joints are doing these days. Anywho, link in the description, pick some of this stuff up. Thank you Reynolds for sponsoring this video, but now, Let's check in on that brisket lean. So as usual, I held this brisket overnight in my toaster oven just like this at 155 degrees. Looking like a lovely paper wrap brisket. Nice and saturated with that fat. Gotta love it. Let's see how it looks. Ooh, don't mind if I do. Oh yeah, that's feeling wonderful. Lovely bark on there. Looking real nice all the way around. Feeling nice and tender. I'm gonna let this rest for about 10 minutes because it's still feeling a little toasty. And then we'll slice on in. A little tallow in this pan still. Oops. Oh yes, please. Great fire starter too. Gotta say folks, this is looking pretty good. I was worried it was gonna shrink up or shape weird or something, but pretty happy with how that looks. And whenever you're cutting a lean, whether it's just a lean or you're bisecting a brisket, I always recommend starting on the big end. Just cause it's a lot easier to get these thicker slices from this side, as opposed to going from this side in, cause you're gonna end up with a chunk like this big that's a little hard to slice. Just personal preference. There we go folks. First lean burn ends, not ideal. Little crispy as to be expected, but not bad looking. Definitely nice and juicy, barky. And there's our lean. That is looking pretty good to me. Get some nice quarter inch slices out of here. And there we have it folks. Nothing wrong with that. It's a nice looking slice of some center cut lean. Smells good, nice and soft. Not too shabby, folks, still nice and juicy. This point definitely got a little crispy, as to be expected. I mean, it's a bunch of lean brisket, but good fat render, nice and juicy. <laughs> Tell you what, definitely something worth giving a shot. If it's all you can get, hey. Might as well. Gotta love the lean, folks. Nice and barky on there. Good fat render on this top part. Nice and tender. Come on, what's not to like about that? I gotta give this a taste real quick. Mmm. Oh man. Oh, that is fantastic. It's kind of nice how it's just the lean, you know what I mean? Not nearly as heavy. Still very flavorful. Oh. Mm hmm. Nice and smoky, beautiful bark. About as juicy as a lean can be. Like I'm saying, if this is the only thing you can get your hands on, don't knock it. I mean, this is A OK in my book. Beautiful bark, wonderful smoky flavor, nice and juicy, nice and tender. Nothing wrong with that. I mean, come on. It's a beautiful looking slice of brisket. 
What is not to like about that? Nope. Don't mind if I do. It's really good. I mean, it's always gonna be drier than fatty brisket just by nature, but honestly, it's better than I was expecting it to be. Not bad, folks. Not bad at all. I wouldn't go out of my way to do this, but you know, if it's all you got, that's all you got. Or maybe if you're only trying to feed a few people, like if it's just you and your kid or something like that, this is a great way to go about it. Mm. Also, if you're just making brisket for like a chili or to go in beans or something like that, or you know, your eggs or something, this is another great way to go about doing that as well. All in all, I'd say it's a success, folks. You can, in fact, cook a brisket lean and have pretty good results. But without further ado, I think it's time for the official taste test. Ah, <laughs> we're on a diet. We're eating lean brisket today. All right, y'all, that is it. That is how to make some absolutely fantastic brisket lean. Again, it's never gonna be as good as a nice fatty slice of brisket, but if you're trying to make some sandwiches and you don't wanna end up with 10 to 15 pounds of meat at the end of the day, this is a great way to go about doing that. But that being said, if you enjoyed this video, let me know by hitting that subscribe button. Let YouTube know by dropping a like on this video. Leave a comment down below letting me know what you wanna see me cook next. If you do give this recipe a try for yourself, be sure to tag me on Instagram at Chud's Barbecue. I love to see what y'all are cooking. Big shout out to all the Patreon members. Thank you for supporting Team Chud and allowing me to keep making videos. And until the next time I see you, please, Please go cook something outside. Peace.